the name jar by Jan Suk Choi. Through the school bus window, Anhai looked at the strange buildings and houses on the way to her new school. It was her first day, and she was both nervous and excited. She fingered her little bl block of wood in her pocket and remembered leaving her grandmother at the airport in Korea. Her grandmother had wiped away Anhai's tears and handed her an ink pad and a small satin pouch. Your name is inside, she said. My name, Anhai had wondered. Again, she took out the red pouch to look at the wooden block with her name carved in it as she ran with it. Along the grooves and ridges of Korean characters, she pictured her grandmother's smile. Sad thing for show and tell a boy as Anhe, surprising her. Anhe looked up as more kids leaned over. No, it's mine, Yunhe answered, quickly putting the pouch back in her pocket. Are you new here? What's your name? a girl asked. Une, the girl asked, scrunching up her face. Oh, 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 nay, some kids chanted. No, no, Anhai corrected. It's spelled U-N-H-E-I. It's pronounced Yunhe. Oh, it's you hey, the boy said. Like you, hey, what, what about? Hey, you. Just then, the bus pulled up to the school and the doors opened. Yunhei hurried to get off. You hey, bye bye, the kids yelled as she left. Yunhei felt herself blush. Yunhei stood in the doorway of her new and noisy classroom. She was relieved that the kids on the bus had gone to other rooms, but her face still red. Aren't you going in? asked the curly haired boy with lots of dots on his face. You're the new girl, right? he asked cheerfully. Yunhei nodded and before she could walk away, the boy took her hand and pulled her through the door. Here's the new girl, he announced so loudly that the teacher, Mr. Kokotos, almost dropped his glasses. Mr. Kokotos thanked him and greeted Yunhei. Please welcome our newest student, he said to the class. She and... Her family just arrived from Korea last week. Yunhei smiled broadly and tried not to show her nervousness. What's your name? Someone shouted. yun had pictured the kids on the bus. Um, I haven't picked one yet, she told the class, but I'll let you know by next week. As Mr. Kokoto showed her to her desk, she felt many round curious eyes on her. Why doesn't she have a name? She heard someone whisper. Maybe she robbed the bank in Korea and needs a new identity, a boy replied. On the bus home, nobody teased her. But Yunhei kept thinking about her name. How was school, Yunhei? Her mother asked when she walked in. Did you understand the teacher? Yunhei nodded simply. She unpacked her school bag and set a red pouch by a photograph of her grandma. I'm glad you're learning English well, her mother said. You must study hard, behave nicely, and get good grades to show that you're a good Korean. I will, she replied. Yunhei, but, but I think I would like my own American name, she said quickly. Her mother looked at her with a surprise. Why, Yunhei is a beautiful name. Your grandma and I went to a name master for it. But it's so hard to pronounce, Yunhei complained. I don't want to be different from all the American kids. You are different, Yunhei, her mother said. That's a good thing. Yunhei just wrinkled her nose. Later that day, Yunhei and her mother went grocery shopping in their new neighborhood. They passed Fadil's Falafel, Tony's Pizza, and Dot's Deli. A big graffiti-painted garbage truck roared like a lion as it took off down the street. Nothing sounded or looked familiar until they got to Kim's Market. The sign was in both English and Korean. Her mother picked up cabbage and to make kimchi, Korean-style spicy pickled cabbage, and other vegetables and meat. She also found some seaweed, yun -hye's favorite for soup. It made yun a smile. Just because we moved to America, her mother said, doesn't mean we stop eating Korean food. At the checkout counter, a friendly man smiled at Yunhei. Helping my, your mother with shopping, he asked. Yunhei nodded. I'm Mr. Kim, he said, and what is your name? Yunhei, he answered. Ah, oh, what a beautiful name, he said. Doesn't it mean Grace? Yunhei nodded again. 
My mother and grandmother went to a name master for it, she told him. A graceful name for a graceful girl, Mr. Kim said as he put their groceries into bags. Welcome to the neighborhood, yoon Hei. That evening, yoon Hei stood in front of the bathroom mirror. Hi, my name is Amanda, she said cheerfully. Then she wrinkled her nose. Hi, my name is Laura. Hmm, maybe not. Her smile turned down. Nothing sounded right. Nothing felt right. I don't think American kids will like me, she worried as she began to brush her teeth. Hi, my name is Shushri, she said to the mirror with her mouth full of toothpaste. The next morning when yoon Hae arrived at school, she found a glass jar on her desk with some pieces of paper in it. yoon Hae took out one and it read aloud, Daisy. That's my baby sister's nickname, but she said you can use it if you want, said Cindy, who sat next to her. yoon Hae took out the rest of the paper. Tamala, she read. I got it from a storybook, said Nate. She was smart and brave. yoon Hae nodded and unfolded another piece. Wednesday? Yeah, you came here on Wednesday, said Ralph. Thank you for your help, a smile spread over yoon Hae's face. Ralph quickly said, we'll put more names in it. You can pick whatever you like or pick them all. You'll have the longest name in history. At three o'clock, the bell rang for the end of school day. yoon Hae looked out the window and saw it was sprinkling. It's the same rain, she thought, but it's a different place, she watched. Other kids leaving in groups. Hey, a familiar voice called out to her. And he turned around to see curly hair boy again. I'm Joey, he said. And you? Don't you have an, any name? yoon Hae thought for a moment. Well, I can show you, she said, and took out the small pouch she pressed. She pressed a wooden block on the ink pad and then stamped it on a piece of paper. This is my name stamp, she said. My grandma gave it to me. In Korea, I can use it as a signature when I open a bank account or write a letter. And whenever I miss my grandma, I use it to fill a piece of paper. Want to try? She offered the stamp to Joey. He carefully inked the stamp and pressed it hard on the paper. The red characters gleamed against the whiteness. Wow, that's beautiful, Joey said. Can I keep the page? Sure, yoon Hae said. And the two of them shared her umbrella as they walked to the school bus. Every day, the jar got fuller with more names, and yoon Hae read them all and found a few names she liked. Miranda, Stella, Avery, they sounded interesting. I hope you choose the name and put in, Marco told her at the snack time. I put three more, said Ralph, Madison, Park, and Lex. They're my favorite street names. Maybe you should close your eyes and draw a name, Rosie suggested. Ralph frowned. That's silly. What if she doesn't like the name she draws? Well, we didn't get to choose our names when we were born, did we, Rosie argued. Everyone thought about this. When yoon Hae got home from school that day, her little brother ran to give her a letter. It was from her grandma. She opened it quickly and he said, To my aunt yoon Hae, I hope you're enjoying your new school and new friends. Be sure to help your mother and your little brother. Here the moon is up, but the sun is up. No matter how far apart we are, no matter how different America is from Korea, you'll always be my yoon Hae, your grandma forever. yoon Hae took out her wooden stamp and filled the paper with it. She thought for a long time in front of the bathroom mirror. On Saturday, yoon Hae walked to Mr. Kim's store. Mr. Kim was helping a customer, but he looked up and greeted her. Hi, yoon Hae. Hello, Mr. Kim, yoon Hae replied. She felt that she was back in her old neighborhood in Korea. Hey, said the customer, turning around. It was Joey. Your name is Eun Hae, he asked with her eyes open wide. yoon Hae looked at him and at Mr. Kim, then turned to Joey. She nodded slowly. Yes, it's pronounced yoon Hae, and that means grace, Mr. Kim added. yoon Hae, Joey said slowly, this time perfectly. He made yoon Hae smile. I'll have it ready for you tomorrow, said Mr. Kim to, to Joey. Thank you, Mr. Kim. See you Monday, yoon Hae, Joey said to her. He left before she could ask him why he was at the store. On Monday, yoon Hae came to class early to look at the names one last time. But the jar wasn't on her desk. 
Instead, there was a single piece of paper with a name on it. Yunhei slipped it in her pocket. Where is your name, Jar? Ralph asked as soon as he saw it was gone. I don't know, Yunhei said. It wasn't on Mr. Kokoto's desk or any other desks, and it wasn't on the counters or any of the shelves. As the other kids arrived, they helped look. Soon Mr. Kokoto's came in, and Ralph shouted at him. The name Jar is gone! The jar with all the names in it! Gone, Mr. Kokotos replied. With a look of concern, he asked Yunhei, Did you get a chance to read all the names? Yunhei nodded. She took a breath. I'm ready to introduce myself, she said. Yunhei one wrote her name in both English and Korean on the chalkboard. I like the beautiful names and funny names you thought for me, she told the class, but I realized that I liked my name best, so I chose it again. Korean names mean something. Yunhei means grace. Grace, Grace, and hey, shouted Ralph. Everyone tried to say it. Yun hey, Yun hey, Yun hey. Yun hey said her name again slowly and clearly. Soon the kids began to say it better, even Mr. Kokodos. They applauded Yun hey's choice. James named, I'm named after a flower, Rosie whispered to Yun hey. Lots of American names have meanings too, Mr. Kokodos reminding everyone. When the class was dismissed, Yun hey heard her new friend say goodbye. Bye, Yunhei. See you tomorrow. Goodbye, Yunhei. Yunhei said goodbye and then looked around for Joey, but he was already gone. Yunhei, Yunhei, come downstairs, mother called up to Yunhei. Your friend is here. Yunhei rushed down to see who she meant. There stood Joey, and in his arms was an aim jar. Where did you find it? asked Yunhei breathlessly. Joey looked embarrassed. Um, well, I looked, I took it, but only because I wanted you to keep your own name, and you did. He reached in and pulled out the names. Do you want to keep them, he asked. Thank you, I'll keep them as a souvenir, Yunhei said, happily. Then she pulled out the piece of paper from her pocket. Do you want this back, Joey grinned? You can keep it. I'll return the name jar to the class. Maybe you could put some Korean nicknames in it for us, named with good meanings. I could do that, agreed Unhei. I already got a Korean nickname, Joey said. Mr. Kim helped me choose it. Carefully, he pulled a small silver felt patch from his pocket. Then he took out a dark wooden stamp with beautiful Korean characters carved sharply into it. He pressed it on the ink pad and then on one piece of paper next to her name. Chinkus, read Unhei. That means friend. And Chinkus smiled back. The End <laughs>